Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your day, and thank you for wanting to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though we're studying in the Old Testament, our goal is always, when we come to the Word of God, to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ, to learn about Him, to see in the examples of other people how they practice a Christ-like life. And that's exactly what we're finding here as we are studying in the book of Ruth, Right now, my Bible sits open to Ruth chapter 3. If it's possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there in Ruth and chapter 3. Also, along with your Bible, get a piece of paper and pen so you can take some notes, but also with that pen and paper, you'll be ready to jot down information on how to contact us because at the end of the program, my announcer is going to come on and he's going to be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our gospel tracks. And just in case you're relatively new to the program, this radio program, Bible Tract Echoes, is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated. We have been publishing gospel tracts in different languages, giving them away free of charge all over the world. We've been doing this now for 81 years. And I want to send you a free sample pack out of our gospel tracts. I'm going to highlight one of those in a moment. It's titled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. But I'll say more about that here in a second. As we get ready for a Bible study, the book of Ruth is obviously a story centered around the woman named Ruth. But there's two other people that play a dominant role here. One is Naomi, that's Ruth's mother-in-law, and both Ruth and Naomi are widows and in a very sore financial condition. The other prominent person is a man named Boaz. Now, my big picture outline for the book of Ruth is this. In chapter 1, Ruth is a damaged woman. In chapter 2, Ruth is a decided woman. In chapter 3 here, Ruth is a deliberate woman. And when we get to chapter 4, we're going to find that Ruth is a distinguished woman. Last Friday, we began our walk through chapter 3. Here, Ruth and Naomi have recognized that God is at work on their behalf. He's been moving in their lives. So, in great wisdom and with deliberate action, Ruth is going to take a step to cooperate with what God is doing. Now, God has opened a door, so she's going to take a step to walk through that door. And so far... In the opening five verses of chapter 3, I pointed out the security in verse 1. I've pointed out the status in verse 2. And today, as we come to verse 3, my key word will be strategy or the plan of action Ruth is going to take in cooperating with God. Now, this step is a step of fearfulness. It'll be taken by faith, but all the blessing that comes when believers act in faith. Get your Bible open. Join me, please, there. I mentioned a moment ago the gospel tracts. Now, a gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. It's a short, written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now is entitled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. This track was written because so many times, many of us who have asked people about their salvation status and how they're hoping to go to heaven have gotten the answer that, well, I'm keeping the Ten Commandments as best I can. And people think that the Ten Commandments were given as a way to get to heaven. And that's not true. Let me ask you, believer friend, if somebody were to come to you and say, why did God give the Ten Commandments? Can you give them a good answer? 
Well, if you're a believer, you need to read this track. It'll answer that question. But the track is really written so that those who are trusting in the Ten Commandments and their goodness in keeping them will see that the Ten Commandments was there to show them how sinful they are in their need of, of a Savior. Oh, please, this gospel track, I am keeping the Ten Commandments, is a great evangelism tool. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information so I can send you that sample packet. You can just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open to the book of Ruth in chapter 3, I begin to read here at verse 3. Naomi says to Ruth, Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man, the man here is Boaz, until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be, when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, Ruth says to Naomi, all that thou sayest unto me, I will do. The opening five verses here of the chapter give us the, the, the fact that Naomi is giving godly, proactive advice to Ruth. I've titled this whole paragraph with the word consultation. In verse 1, as we said before, we find the security Naomi is seeking for Ruth. In verse 2, we saw the status of Boaz. But now in verse 3, we see the strategy Ruth is uh, told to implement to walk through God's door of opportunity. Now, up to this point in the story of Ruth, it's been Boaz who's done some things that clearly display that he has a heart interest in Ruth. He has done the first moves to say, in essence, I'd like to have a close relationship with Ruth. Well, Naomi has recognized all this. She's recognized the overt affections of Boaz. And now Naomi tells Ruth how to respond. Ruth was to make herself presentable so that Boaz would recognize that Ruth is open to his advances and his opening up himself to want to be her husband. Ruth is told to wash herself, put on perfume, and put on her best dress. Then she's to go to where Boaz is threshing grain and take the steps that says, I'm available to be your bride. I accept your affections. <laughs> Not only does verse 3 tell us the strategy Ruth is going to use, it also talks about the secrecy. Verse 3 says these words, But make not thyself known unto the man until he have done eating and drinking. Now, Ruth wants to go to Boaz in secrecy so that he alone would be aware of her presence. She was to act in a way as to not reveal her willingness publicly to be his bride. Now, in verse 4, Naomi gives Ruth a signal. That's my next key outline word, a signal. I've talked about the security, the status, the strategy, the secrecy. Now in verse 4 is the signal. But notice verse 4. Notice how it opens. It says, now it shall be. Notice those words, those four English words translate a Hebrew phrase, which means basically this. Ruth, this is crucial. Ruth, this is important. Don't miss this step. And the rest of verse 4 describes the signal which Ruth was to give, which Boaz would understand. Verse 4 goes on to say this. When he, Boaz, lieth down, that thou shalt make or notice the place where he shall be, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Listen, please. Some Bible writers have tried to turn this whole action here into an immoral, sensual act. Friend, it is not. It is not. Ruth would uncover Boaz's feet, and obviously, at that point, the cool night air on his feet would wake him up. At that point, he would find Ruth lying, not under his covers, but at his feet. It was a signal of her submission to him and to his affections. 
Again, don't let anybody ever try to convince you that there's something seductive that's happening here. You see, Ruth and Naomi, for them now to begin to act in a sinful manner after they have been so repentant, so humble, and so trusting in God, well, that would just turn the story up on its moral head. I have one more word here, beginning with the letter S, to complete my outline of verses 1 through 5. That word is the word submission, based upon verse 5. In the Oriental culture then, and even to this day, the idea of an arranged marriage still goes on. At the local church that my wife and I are members of, we have some people that work in our town that are from India, and their parents to this day still arrange their marriages. Well, Naomi is arranging for Ruth's future rest by putting actions into this budding romance. Ruth is trusting Naomi. So in verse 5, Ruth says that she will do all that Naomi has counseled her to do. Ruth ends by saying in verse 5, I will do it. Now here, here's a great takeaway lesson from verses 1 through 5. We've seen the story as it actually is. Is there any takeaway lesson for us, for you and I today? Well, Let's not take away necessarily the idea of arranged marriages. I do think, though, that when people get married, they ought to have the blessing of their family, particularly their parents. But Boaz here, notice the lesson, Boaz is the one who has initiated his interest in Ruth. We see that in chapter 2. Boaz has demonstrated his desire to have a relationship with her. Now, though, Ruth must respond For any relationship to develop, she must respond. She must receive. She must accept his actions. She indicates that she accepts Boaz's love advances. Boy, friend, this sure sounds a lot like a sinner responding to Jesus and receiving his love advances displayed at Calvary. This is why the Bible says that we, Speaking to believers, we love him. We love Christ because he first loved us. Ruth came into Bethlehem expecting nothing. She expected to be treated like an outcast, but there was one who initiated advances of love to her. Friend, you and I are enemies of God. Have you read what we're told in Romans chapter 1? We're, we're enemies of God. He's not in our thoughts. None of us are are good people. We're all sinners. But then God initiates love to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In chapter 2, it's Boaz who was extending food to her in front of others. Christ has initiated a desire to have a love relationship with any and all people by dying on the cross. He died for the sins of the world, but his death only becomes effective when you and I respond to his love advances by receiving him as our Savior. But as many as receive Christ, to them he gives the power, the authority, the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Have you responded to the love advances of Jesus by receiving him as your Savior? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.